Welcome back and welcome to this incredible session with the title An Avatar Conversation. As you know, we also expect the Avatar movie, the second part, uh, very soon in the cinemas. So we are very curious to hear how actually pharma can benefit out of avatars. Before we do that, I would like to show you a very interesting avatar piece, which uh, our colleague Mark Bentin and we help are producing. So I will just put them on main stage. Welcome back to Next Normal. Up next is the masterclass sessions presented in collaboration with WeHealth. Let me introduce you to Mark Benton, CEO and founder of WeHealth. Hello, Mark. Thanks, Dario, and welcome, everyone. 2023 is here already, and we're seeing real acceleration across the digital landscape. Now is the time to take advantage of amazing innovations that have occurred in recent months. Dario, the stage is yours. So, this was the Avatar video. Jema, surprised what technology can do? Yes, um, I, I was more or less aware of it, but yeah, I, I, this is impressive. Congratulations. <laughs> Fantastic. I won't ask you if you're impressed, Mark, because you produce that, so <laughs> that's typical for you, right? Well, uh, what we're seeing is um, this is a sort of a, a trend of custom uh, lifelike avatars. And, um, uh, and, and if you uh, take a little bit of time to to work the voices a, a little bit, then they can really be quite uh, convincing and, and you don't have to step in front of the camera. Uh, so it's a lot of time savings um, and uh, they can speak different languages. So Dario, you can now speak uh, any of the other languages that you would uh, like to with your avatar. And you can also then just generate um, you know, clips and content and uh, invitations and updates and highlights and things like that uh, really, really easily. Um, with just data, just uh, text, and uh, and so that makes it you know very compelling from a a speed of uh, production and a cost and 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 price point uh, perspective as well. So it does fit in this kind of modular content uh, ecosystem. Mm, so you can sort and spread the message right in the right way and the right direction. So let's kick uh, start the, the uh, discussion. My first question to you, gentlemen, is uh, avatars are widely discussed in pharma as part of the whole omnichannel strategy. Uh, why will, why actually we need avatars in pharma and why do they potentially matter for our own channel strategy? Let's start with you, Chen. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, uh, I, well, first of all, we need to be careful not to fall into the shiny new toy syndrome because many people tend to dismiss nowadays shiny toys if they don't uh, connect it to a value of the business. Uh, so for me, the, the avatars are they don't have this shiny toy um, feature because I see a clear value on uh, sorting out the personalization of the content uh, without making it too too lengthy. So if you, I, I don't know if you've seen this, but uh, there is a report that actually says that the pharma industry takes 21 days in average to approve content, a single piece of content. So if that's the time to approve, how much time do we take to actually <clears throat> de develop the content? It's a lot. <clears throat> so if we are able to shorten the time to develop a single piece of content in that in that piece of content, it's already personalized. Mm -hmm. That's a huge, uh, imagine how much time it would take. Now, for me, an avatar like this can help create personalized videos from a sales representative or even uh, a KOL, for example, or an MSL uh you you name it right so it's it's all about personalizing personalizing at a big scale uh and in a matter of minutes um so that we can uh, effectively reduce the time to develop and uh and then you can take 20 uh, hopefully you won't take 21 days to approve the content afterwards uh but yeah uh, i see the i see a great value uh on these avatars thanks a lot channel mark well, and the wonderful thing about this type of approach is um, they're always compliant, right? Because you're always on script. Um, it does fill, there's different use cases, I think, which makes it a compelling capability um, across those use cases. So they can be used in certain ways with the field teams. Uh, whether it's live video or, or avatar video, then that's a possibility. KOL certainly uh, to be able to spread the message to different um, constituent uh, groups um, in uncovered territories uh, can certainly help uh, with different roles 
to be able to bring content through and, and of course with patients. So we do see the applicability across a variety of different um, verticals uh, within uh, the life sciences industry. And at the end of the day, it starts compliant, it ends compliant, and you are able to generate the material to get it down to be the personalization of a single uh, message. So that helps to you know, carry that message and amplify it in the right way that is also informed by data. So I think that's a very powerful mechanism. Um, it's also very convenient from that compliance perspective because you know once you've approved the text, it will be on text, on, on script. And at the end of the day, when you're looking at content, we can't forget that this is video. We're not necessarily needing to read a document. We're receiving a short clip so it might be a summarization of some content from uh, uh, a Congress, but it's very convenient to then, as a physician, to consume this content and to then go deeper to, to find out more materials and to attend a webinar or what have you. So I, I think it serves that purpose as well, um, uh, to really make it easy to deliver high quality messaging to different personas um, across uh, the various uh, use cases. Thanks, Mark. Uh, next question, which certainly is again related to medical affairs, uh, is do you also see critical and good use cases for medical affairs as a, as a part of this omnichannel strategy to incorporate also the avatars there or, or not? We can start with you, Mark. Well, I think that's probably one of the, uh, uh, maybe the best uh, uses of this kind of capability because it's really difficult to get uh, uh, key opinion leaders' time, you know, a leading expert's time, and um, to be able to uh, capture the information that's necessary that then they can also approve that material later on, but not necessarily need to step in front of the camera uh, again and have that coordination difficulty, it means just a lot easier role for those individuals to, to be part of it, um, as well as to get their message out to physicians in other languages that um, maybe might uh, understand the content that much better, uh, other languages that they may not, may not speak. So I think that medical side allows very relevant content to be delivered in the maximum way possible um, to, to different audience groups. Um, and uh, I definitely think that that is uh, a clear use case. And at the end of the day, you're not necessarily dealing with uh, thousands of field team members. You're really dealing with a certain small number of key opinion leaders who um, would be part of this session who are used to having their material recorded anyway. And this is just a supplement to that. Thanks a lot. Emma? Yeah, I I agree. I think that on the one side, uh, to for example help support a KOL in uh, delivering a speech in a language where the customers are not, uh, where customers have difficulties understanding in English, for example, right? So if you have a KOL that is giving a lecture in English, uh, and then someone in one of those countries, in one of your big markets, uh, prefers to listen to the person in the local language, you avoid the that the, having the letters and the subtitles in the video, right? By actually having the same person speaking in a, in a different language. That, that is <clears throat> a huge advantage. But on the other side, uh, and, and also that's a good, a positive experience for your customers, right? Uh, but also on the other side, uh, if you think about uh, sometimes the MSLs in some countries, they are not allowed to actually do uh, a proactive approach to the doctors. It's a more reactive. So when that happens, when the doctor requests a visit from the MSL, um, the MSL has to prepare content uh, and to be able to answer the questions from the doctor already from a pre, uh, re from, from, from something that was uh, so, um, requested before in advance. So if the AI could be able to, to support that job of the MSL in personalizing some of that content ahead of the visit or after the visit, then that also allows the MSL to become also a sort of medical orchestrator or scientific orchestrator. I don't want to uh, come up with that buzzy buzz, uh, buzzword, but yeah, this is I see the that in a in a medical strategy, um, the role of an avatar to deliver science messages in a personalized way and for reactive engagements that could be a, a that could have a, a huge potential. Thank you, Trevor. 
Next question, what are the time frames within which pharma could become avatar savvy and where actually to start? I think this is uh, what our audience wonders, where actually to start to implement a, a real avatar across the only channel. Mark? Well, I think the um, uh, I think the focus on uh, custom sort of lifelike avatars that look like real people that are that are somebody that uh, like a KOL or a, uh, an MSL or a field rep or a training person, uh, they are people that you would uh, meet within that context, right? So they are also going to be met live as representatives, and so it's really supportive of that kind of capability. The um, ability to use those various use cases uh, and apply them is there now. And I think over the next three years, there will be really an exciting time to take advantage of what you can do with it in, tor in order to improve um, the throughput. Uh, you know, video interactions are significantly uh, more interesting for many physicians. And so if we're able to lever that and improve the customer experience, then I think now is the time to be able to do that. Um, and there's a lot of scale that's already built in because it's it it is a, built on top of the existing infrastructure. So the reps, the MSLs, they don't use any new tools, really. Um, they still send emails at the end of the day. It's just the content of the email uh, has has changed significantly. Um, so now is a good time to to embark on it, identify a use case or two. And I think the challenge with a shiny penny uh, that you know, this is something new and interesting, but uh, there's that initial excitement, but then there is sort of this um, un lack of understanding about how to get people. And we think the, the right approach is to start with those initial steps of where it's well controlled, uh, either corporate communications or around a KOL, then move to a slightly wider team, uh, MSLs then move to uh, representatives. Uh, so that way you have the biggest breadth and you can use that content to learn from the physician reaction at each step of the way. Um, and I think that's uh, maybe something that Chema has uh, some uh, opinion on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I Let me start by giving you some per, uh, personal examples uh, on the private and the, and the, and the, um, in the on the private life and also in the professional life uh, on the private life i actually have uh, an app that can actually uh, make you sing a song um or they, they can put your face in a, in, the, in your superhero and then you move so they make your facial expressions to match the ones of your superhero or to match that, that to make to make look like you're singing and whenever i use it for that uh, people adopt it immediately and then they don't have any concern uh, about what am I going to tell you when I was pushed back in pharma? Because the main, not pushback, but the main reaction in the professional life in pharma is data privacy. So how how am I going to ensure that my image is not going to be used for, to deliver a message that I am not allowed, that I am not uh, approving, right? Um, and uh, and again, in the, in, the, in the private life, people adopt it immediately and they go and then uh, they don't care that their image is stored somewhere in the cloud and then already matched right um so that's it so for me if it was if we had this more this mindset of being open to try new things uh we could this could be much more accelerated right like the private life example um but in the pharma industry my 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 experience has been this one like i said so one of the caveats is um ensuring for example a KOL it's always, you're, we're, you're probably gonna have KOLs that are more open to this and are gonna say, yes, I wanna hear myself speaking in Chinese or in uh, Hindi or whatever uh, language you want. Uh, and there are gonna be others who are gonna be like, no, I don't put my face in any technology. So there's gonna be some heavy lifting, which is probably gonna be helped la later on by the generation's shift because one of the things that I've been studying recently, it's about Generation Z. And, uh, and it turns out that Generation Z, it's less, uh, they are a little bit less worried about the usage of their data because they understand that they, it's, it's, like a, it's something that they need to give as exchange to be able to have those memorable, memorable experience they're looking for. So as the, as the KOLs shift that 
um, shift, sorry, as, as this new generation enters and it becomes KOLs, we're probably going to be a shift towards a higher adoption. Um, and, um, and then the last one is we need to look at how the regulations in the industry come, come right? Because if the, if the industry starts using this type of tools, uh, <clears throat> we're, and we are a highly regulated industry. So we just need to make sure that we, we, we are compliant with the GDPR, um, uh, rules regulations, uh, so that we don't make, uh, something that it's going to prevent the pharma industry for, from doing this whatsoever uh, completely. Right. Awesome. Um, so all in all, it's probably going to be, I, I mean, I'm probably, I'm a little bit pessimistic, but I think it's going to be slow. <laughs> um, yes, not, not, not as fast as, as I would like to. Thanks a lot. Mark, what about compliance and avatars? <clears throat> I mean, how pharma compliance is reacting in this approach of, of communication. Yeah, well, I think um, if you look at the wider question of video, uh, whether it's live uh, recorded video um, or uh, AI generated video, there's always that question to ensure, well, uh, we need to make sure that the compliance is there. And um, uh, the good thing about anything that's avatar uh, generated <laughs> it's usually reclined, re reliant on a pre-approved script, whether it's on the patient side, whether it's a short clip, as you mentioned, uh, from an MSL that needs to respond to something, but, um, you know, is, is doing that from a basis of approved material. So that's the starting point. And that makes it actually quite straightforward from a compliance uh, perspective. At least that's been our experience so far, because we've made sure that on any kind of video, uh, they're fully compliant, um, uh, whether it's been live generated or avatar. We've even incorporated specific AI that is uh, uh, in use on, on live video. So it actually double checks to make sure that what is said is actually on script. Uh, so that that way you don't have errors in the system happening um, when you have the ability to, to control it. So I think from a compliance side, that's not so much where the... Um, the, the risk is, uh, as long as one maintains that type of approach, it's really important to uh, make sure that um, it's part and parcel of this omnichannel effort. So if it is a field team that is involved and this is their digital twin that is uh, communicating certain information to different physicians that they may also uh, see, then make sure that that's part of the training, that they understand how that's being used and that that's uh, seen as a positive as opposed to something that might be uh, perceived as a negative. So I think there's a lot of those kinds of elements that we can do to, that are more soft touches uh, to improve um, you know, overall adoption and really take advantage of those uh, three things that are, are critical that the avatars enable in video. Number one, video is great from getting, as we mentioned up front, the message through, but it can now be hyper-personalized to a single individual and it can address different global issues and language. So that's pretty compelling uh, a reason to, to take another look at, invest a little bit of time and energy in order to try and make some use of it in, um, in a constructive manner. Thank you, Mark. Chema? Um, yes, I think that the, um, one of the things that we, we need to make sure that the, is that the people understand, uh, the people that are more on the supporting functions, um, like legal and regulatory are uh, aware of these advantages because again, uh, whenever it's a change management process, right? So it's a, it's a change of mindset um, because uh, what 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 they're trying to do is probably obviously take care of the company so that we don't ma make uh, a big risk, right? So if we are able to ensure that this is a um, let's say uh, the the that we can. That, that nobody is going to be able to uh, to tamper with the uh, with the system uh, or tweak it or and, and that it's it's all in a controlled environment, uh, then I think we're going to be uh, successful in bringing them on board. Uh, but again, it's it's the same case as with the KOLs, right? So like I was saying before, the KOL could be open to do it or not. It's going to be probably the same with the, our regulatory and and uh, legal. A counterparts because some of them are probably going to be open and say yeah i see that you're controlling it and they're probably going to be more open um to discuss that uh, but others are probably going to be more risk avoiders so it's about uh, showing the 
on the one hand, showing the value for the business to that actually hyper personalizing the experience can help us achieve the business objectives. And on the other side, make sure that those uh, that execution is always compliant with that, with that with those controls that Mark was mentioning. So as long as we are able to prove them, uh, th then I think we will we we are we will be able to convince them. Uh, but I think it's I, I don't think it's an easy discussion. It's 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 something uh, we're gonna have to uh, to face at some point. Last question: Where to start when you want to implement such avatar strategy, Mark? Well, there's nothing like um, you know, like anything. The proof of the pudding is in its eating, right? So you you need to actually embark, um, and this is an area that is moving very quickly, um, as as any of these. Um, more visual development areas are. Um, so the core technologies are moving quickly. Uh, it's important to kind of um, uh, give it a try in certain situations, certain uh, scenarios that make sense, whether they be, you know, either with a KOL or with uh, something on the patient side or maybe some internal communication or training um, and uh, get that experience because that actually is, is probably the best way to, to identify um, what the end users feel about the overall experience and also any other issues that might be prevalent uh, along the way. Thanks a lot. Gemma? Yeah, I, it's about, um, I'm going to use the analogy of learning to ride a bicycle, right? So when you when you learn this, you didn't do it by having the bicycle next to you without moving and just standing next to it, right? So you jump into it and then you made some mistakes and then you lift, you, you learned and then you kept going. It's the same with this. Uh, you need you need to start um, with uh, with a small try, and uh, and it maybe it's not going to be perfect. Uh, I I I can tell you in myself. Uh, I have already tried to do my um, my my avatar or my digital twin, as you want to call it, uh, but it's still um, it, it's it's a it's a perf um, it's an improvement process all the time. So if you want to start, I would say. Don't do a big project where you're going to try to engage a lot of people with your uh, with your avatar because you have the risk of not delivering and actually providing a, a, a bad experience to your customers. But rather focus on a small group of, of customers that you can actually that have actually a need of personalization of um, of content. Like, for example, like the example I gave you, maybe you have a group of doctors who you cannot visit them. Uh, but are potential, but they are too expensive to reach uh, on a monthly basis. So maybe whenever they call out to you, then maybe you can actually have a self, um, uh, I don't want to say self-detaining, self but a, like a self-education tool where you can actually provide them these hyper hyper messages, hyper personalized messages. And then you learn, you learn what they're searching for. You learn if the experience is, um, is positive and then you build on that towards other cases. Right. That's so that would be my 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 starting point thanks a lot maybe to learn how to drive a bicycle it's easier to learn it on an electric one right so <laughs> <laughs> yes but, okay so uh, cheva mark was a great discussion uh, we are moving forward to the networking break so the break will be 19 minutes and seeing you all back at 3 45 uh, central europe time uh, thanks a lot again and uh, looking forward to the next one thank you cheers bye bye bye